Hey family, I want to tell you about a new book written by John Almo and Patty Almo. It's called Introduction to Twee for American Diasporas. Now, the book is going to focus on helping you learn the Akan language, culture, and Ghana as a country. It's also a guide uh, through Ghana's most widely spoken language. Now, the book is supposed to help develop your awareness of social customs, cultural practices, uh, by combining historical, cultural, and social uh, context with language training and grammar. Uh, this is the book that you want to pick up um, before you start heading for your first trip to Ghana. Pick up Introduction to Twee for American Diasporas today. Hey fam, welcome back to the African Diaspora News Insider. I am Mungib Zalalem bringing you this report. Today we're going to be talking about what happened behind closed doors. You know, we've talked about this, the Ethiopia situation with the regional and central government, and also, you know, the Eritrean troops allegedly going in there and killing and hurting a lot of people. So CNN went to that region and actually interviewed the people that were affected. Let me show you a short clip. We'll come back and discuss. At a local health facility, we see firsthand the consequences of this almost two-week siege. Two-month-old Johannes's life has been hanging in the balance. His mother risked her life and his to get him past the soldiers encircling the city so that he can receive life-saving oxygen. When he first got ill, it was a hard time, so I couldn't bring him. There was an act of war. He got weaker, but I couldn't find transport. I had to travel difficult roads alone to get him here. He's not out of danger yet. The hospital electricity flickers on and off, and they are still waiting to get more cylinders of oxygen. In the almost two weeks that Aksum has been cut off from the outside world, violence has spiked. We find this 24-year-old teacher. Do you know who did this to you? Eritrean soldiers did this. I'm so sorry. This is just one case that we are able to capture because we're here, but it's impossible to know how many more women this was done to while this city was closed off from the outside world. Another health facility, Aksum Referral Hospital. Soldiers walk in and out of the hospital with impunity. One spots the camera and runs off. They run out of blood here. Doctors and medical students are donating their own, but it's still not enough. People who could have been saved are dying. Every patient you see here, the old, the young, the helpless, all injured in this conflict. Our journey here has brought into focus the hollowness of Ethiopia's promises. As we leave Aksum, a line of soldiers encircles the hospital. There is no respite. Ne'mal Bagir, CNN, Aksum, Ethiopia. As you saw, people's lives were affected and usually with war and conflict, it's women and children that are affected disproportionately and it's really sad to see what's going on there. And as you know, all parts of Ethiopia right now, there's something going on. If it's not west, it's the east. If it's not that, it's the south or it's the north. So it's really, really hard to swallow as an Ethiopian. And especially now that the election is coming up soon, it's, it's really not looking good. Anyways, guys, do let us know down below what your thoughts are about this sad situation. I am on Gilzal Alam bringing you this report. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. mgkente.com
Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and download the African Diaspora News Channel app, now available on Google Play and the Apple App Store.